Hello everybody and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog and podcast, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 1,000 comedians and counting over the last 46 years. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today. It's the brilliant character comedian, Mr. Steve Jameson. Yes! <laughs> Right. I nearly said Saul Bernstein. That's your character. That's, that's right. I, I, funny, I didn't know how you were going to introduce it, so I kept. <laughs> done, but you did it. It was perfect. Thank you so much. Lovely well, to be here. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to have you. How how are you? You're all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, the lockdowns are over for the moment, and um, indeed, and I'm working. Um, Brilliant. That's 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 the best news. It's almost like old times, to be honest with you, sitting in the green room, yeah. three, four comics at, having a cup of tea or whatever we're doing um, and just chatting. It's yeah, it's just it's it's a delight. It's so good to be back live, isn't it? It really is. Um, Absolutely. OK, so we're going to spend the next 45 minutes to an hour or so talking about your comedy career interviews all about you um, we could do that uh, in five minutes actually <laughs> <laughs> and i'd like to kick off please by uh, asking you how did you become a comedian in the first place ah okay well uh i'll, I'll try to get it's, it's a weird one please. during the 60s, during the 60s <laughs> and 70s i was in the music business right so kind of there was no fear of going on stage because because I'd, I'd done that i'd been a singer a songwriter uh musician producer so I, I i'd done that um but as i had a conversation funny in the green room a couple of, a couple of weeks ago funny enough and somebody said why music business and i said i didn't what do you mean i went it left me wow and, and that's what happened punk punk and i always i always think of and a bunch of other singers in the same boat as being a full of water and somebody just took, pulled the plug out we all, right. we all disappeared. Punk had started, so nobody us. We weren't, you know, I was already in my late twenties. Um, and as I say, there was a whole a whole bunch of people who just kind of disappeared overnight. So consequently, I spent 15 years as a what I call a civilian, being out of show business. Um and, and a, my third marriage broke up. Right. And I'm sorry. I was absolutely devastated. I just thought I'm what a loser. You know, I've now got three marriages behind me. And, and I was uh, uh, having dinner with some friends one night and I was going through a pretty bad stage. And there was a woman there, was an actress, and she said to me, you know, you're, you're really funny. And I said, I know. And I said, my dad was funny. So my dad was the comedian. He, my dad was a really funny man, great joke teller. And she said, no, no, you, you know, you should do something. And I just, really? She said, yeah. And I was thinking about it. And she said, I said, well, how would, how would I go about it? And she said, well, if you get Time Out magazine, which at the time Malcolm Hay was the was the man there. Yeah, yeah. And and they they show they that they have um, workshops like comedy workshops. Right. And I thought okay. And I cut, I cut quite a long story short. I, I, it was coming up to Christmas, and I was very. I, this just sounds, sounds terrible. It, it it gets better. I was just really <laughs> down. And I phoned my cousin who lived in Brighton, and I said to him, "Listen, how about I come down the day after Boxing Day just for a couple of days?" I said, "I'm just." I'm just really down and I, I just need to be cheered up. And he said, yeah, come, you know, come over, he says, come over about 10 o'clock and um, on, on day after Boxing Day. Anyway, it was one of those situations where I just slept really badly, left home at six, got to Brighton at eight o'clock or quarter to eight or something, knocked on his door. He went mental, absolutely, for waking him up so early. We ended up on, uh, walking along the seafront in Brighton. It was a beautiful, very cold, but beautiful sunny day. And I, and I was in such a state, I was crying. And he's, he's, oh, he's, my. What, what is it? And I said, I'm just so down. I, went, I just, I don't know what to do. He said, well, you know, what, what do you, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I've got a choice. I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to become a stand-up comedian or, or I'm going to top myself. I'm going to commit suicide. And he put his hands on my shoulders and he looked in my eyes and he went, top yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank God you're here. <laughs> well, I, 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 sadly, he, he was like the brother I never had. He was my oh, first man. cousin, and he died a couple of years ago. Oh man! And I told I, t I wasn't sure what I, I don't like. 
you won't believe this. I hate public speaking. Right. I mean, I, on stage, an act, an act is one thing, but this is different. And I, I said to my wife, I said, you know what, should, should I tell that story? It's at a funeral. She said, no. She said, you know, people, everyone there who knew, who knows you, who would know how close you were and the sort of relationship you had with him. And I told that and every, I mean, just, it cheered everybody up. That it is was wonderful. a sad thing. That um, is so brilliant. And, and basically, um, I kept my eye on time out and there was a workshop came up in the February, I think, with a, a guy called Tony Allen. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. One of the yeah, original yeah. alternative comedians. Yeah. And um, in, in fact, I, I, apart from him kind of giving me good pointers, he, he, he turned me on to Lenny Bruce. Right. Uh, and by listening to Lenny Bruce, Lenny Bruce had a, um, a routine called The Genie. Yes, yeah. And in it was a character called Soul. And that is why yeah. Soul became, where Bernstein came from, I don't know. It was just, it came into my head and it was seemed right. Um, although, funny, if you see the movie, um, the Sunshine Boys. Yes, no, it was. There's well, a yeah. scene in it where Walter Matthau says to George Burns, "Soul, so and so died." He went, and I'm, somebody said, "No, it's right." He said, "He said no, George Burns says, no, 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 it was Soul Bernstein." Wow. So I don't, I don't know, but I will tell you something. I did a gig in Tunbridge Wells about four or five years ago, and an elderly couple came backstage. The man said, "There's a couple would like to see you," and the woman said, "We've been following your career." For nearly 50 years. Wow. So I don't know who they thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that obviously... is... what, it, what, what I'm getting from listening to this, what what sort of year was this then when you first did your you, your first ever gig as 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 the character? Because we're gonna come on to the character in a minute. Well, I did my well, I did 10 years as me. Right. I, I, I started I started in uh, I went to the um did the workshop in in February, March, 1993. Right. Uh, that was like six, eight weeks or something. Did my very first gig on May the 11th, 1993, down at the King's Head in Crouch End. I know it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I didn't create, I created Soul some years later. Right. Funny enough, at the at the King's Head, um, <laughs> within a, 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 an improviser, an improv group with, with that Mark Mayer ran. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, well. And I know you think, so, well, why would you create a character within an improv troupe? But it kind of works. We all created something. Wow. Um, and Sol, Sol basically was, was just a man. There was no, there was no backstory till, till a few years later. Yeah. What uh, I, what I, I, I might as well answer that question as no, well. No, no, no. Uh, let's 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 move on to him because um, I think uh, it's one of the current great characters in stand-up comedy. Well, I, would, I would put you up. I would put you up there with um, Alan Partridge and uh, Al Murray, the pub landlord. Oh my god! Whenever, oh, whenever, no. whenever I, whenever your name is on the bill, I know I'm going to have a great time. Whenever Soul's name's on the bill, because oh, well, thank you. Oh, for, I don't know for, what to say. <laughs> for people who don't know who he is, describe who he is and and and, and his background for us. Okay, uh, Sol is, is an 88-year-old old Jewish man who was born in the Ukraine, right. <laughs> ended up in his, in his teens, early teens in America, um, came, came from, I say, a showbiz family, they were street performers. Uh, Sol went to, to America, ended up playing in the Catskill Mountains, what they call the Porch <laughs> Belt, where every Jewish comedian in America had a training ground. It was kind of a Jewish Butlins holiday camp kind of thing. <laughs> um, did Vegas, did New York, just Miami, did all those places um, and kind of made a comeback. Um, so so story was kind of an all-round entertainer. Yeah. He would sing, he would dance, he would, because in those years you had to, you know, you had to do everything. He would tell jokes, he would sing, he would dance, uh, magic tricks, um, uh, ventriloquist act, every, you know, everything a, a performer could do, <laughs> you had to do, you had, that was in your ammunition. So, so it's kind of, I, I almost say it's a, a tribute act to some of those old guys that were in, like um, the Sunshine Boys that exactly. were in Vaudeville, in American Music Hall over here. Um, yeah, it's a trip. I mean, bear in mind, I, you know, I'm 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 in my I'm in my seventies. 
Wow. So, so the kind of people that I would, I look up to and influence me would, would be the same people that Barry Cryer. Loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. The young guys around today wouldn't even know some. I mean, no. there are young comics who see me now. And this is fresh for them. They, they've never seen this before. What I, I mean, the material is all modern, but it's written in a way yeah. where, it, where people say, oh, they're old jokes. They're not old jokes, but they're written in a very old fashioned way. That's exactly the point I was going to make. Um, my, we had, we had, um, I, I interviewed Barry Cryer on here on, on, oh, on, 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 on the blog and it, man. and it was literally, what was it like working with Morecambe and Wise? What was it like working with Les Dawson? What was it like working with the two rows? And these great comedians of the seventies. Let was me interrupt you. He worked with Bob Hope. Oh, he worked with everybody. He worked with all the America because my yeah. influence is the American. Comics, yeah. 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 Rather than, than the English. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although, well, having said that, the reason I wear a Trilby hat is, uh, is a tribute to a, a, an old Northern comic called Jimmy James. Oh, uh, well, my, I loved as a kid. My my home city is Carlisle, and I know Jimmy James really well. I, I'm, oh, really? I'm broadcasting this from London, but my home city is Carlisle, and Jimmy James growing from? up. Was it? He wasn't from Carlisle. He was from Leeds, wasn't he? It was from Leeds, but it was but he was a northern comic who was oh, absolutely pop, yeah popular popular. I know, My dad used to love him. Absolutely, and that you can still see on YouTube. Yeah, the sketch with the elephant in the the box with the, uh, with the castle <laughs> and the that is fantastic. And when you mention about when you describe Sol, that's the impression I get because. You were saying about the great American Jewish comedians. Um, my favourite American comedy playwright is Neil Simon. Those oh, old uh, uh, films, The Sunshine Boys, The Odd Couple was a, a, it's just a classic play. I I was in an my uh, I used to work in the civil service and I was in an amateur dramatic society and we put The Odd Couple on uh, and and they asked me what was my favourite script and I said this right. and I played Oscar. And there were so many great lines. He had about a thousand lines, but the jokes were just so well done. And it's resembling, it, it comes across in your act. I, 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 absolutely I, I, did, I didn't know that. I'm really, I'm really flattered that, that you couldn't say anything nicer. Well, my friend, it, that's in, when I saw the act, I thought this guy is hilarious. This character is so good. I particularly love the opening line when you walk on and you go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm an old Jew. Um, they gave me five minutes uh, to perform. It took me two and a half minutes to walk on and two and a half, it'll take me two and a half minutes to walk on. That's genius. <laughs> uh, that, and you, you almost got it right there. But <laughs> <laughs> Tell it how it is, if you want to tell it, please. I would walk up and say, God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. God, thanks for coming. Listen, they said I could do 20 minutes. It took me 10 minutes to get on. It'll take me 10 minutes to get up. So that's the show. You got <laughs> good night. I was I'm almost like, well, yes, that's the, that's the point of it. Um, uh, it's, such a, it's such a great character. Um, uh, um, so you did 10, uh, you, did you say you did 10 years as yourself before he yep. came along? Yeah. What, what was that experience like as, as, as yourself? Did you, was that just a learning experience? Uh, as it turned out, it was a learning experience, yeah. uh, and it was a very tough learning experience because yeah. um, <laughs> there are lines that I do as Soul, which were written as me, right? And I'm kind of, I'm kind of jealous of Soul. Soul, I never got the laughs that he gets. And <laughs> I say he because he is separate. He is yeah. separate to me. Yeah, I, I can, I can honestly stand up and say, I, he's a, he's a funny man, um, and I don't think I was that funny. <laughs> You are hilarious, mate, because you created him. Um, I all I always think whenever I think of character comedians, I always think of Ronnie Barker because, as himself, he was very. He came across very shy in interviews. He he yeah, yeah. He, he would never. He always had to have something, even if it was a moustache or even the glasses, as a front, and then he was fine. And but of course, these characters he created were extraordinary. They really were oh, they completely different. Absolutely. I know, absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah, absolutely and, and wonderful. that's what I see with Sol. I mean, you're absolutely transformed when you walk out onto the stage and you just get an, I've never seen you give a bad gig. You, you just well, walk out you, and you just you've get- lucky. You've, you've, missed, you've missed them, you've not been there. <laughs> <in those nights. laughs> 
Well, I was going to come on to this. <laughs> to date, what has been your best and worst gig? Because I can't imagine you ever having one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, to be honest with you, best gig, there's there's been loads which have just been so enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not even sure I could pinpoint um, one in particular. Uh, that sounds, uh, and I don't mean that to sound snotty. No. It's just that. I, I, I don't know. I suppose like working working in Liverpool, there's there's just something one, and I'm there this weekend. Right. Um, <laughs> there's just something about Liverpool where Soul can be as as rude as he wants and get away with it. Because uh, <laughs> I have to tell you, when Soul started, I, there was no there was no plan for him to be a, a, a dirty comic. I I, re I wanted to be like when I see Dominic. I worked with Dominic Holland recently. Yeah, said, superb. Said, you know what I said. And he, and he said, oh, Soul was really rude. I went, you won't believe this. But when I started doing Soul, I was watching you and I thought, it's really good. A clean act. You can do television. You, you know, you can do everything. And Soul can't, can't do all that. I'm, yeah. I'm a nightclub comedian. Yeah. And, I'm yeah. really, and, and I'm really delighted. I'm happy with that. That's brilliant. Um, you know, I know th people are saying it's getting tougher now. You know, Roy Chubby Brown's getting banned and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Could that happen to Soul? It, it may be. I don't, I don't know. Um, obviously, I hope not because yeah. there's still some life in me. And, sure. and um, it, it, it's great fun. But I often think the audience are looking at Soul. When I've said again, it's that the old grandfather. Oh, talking about, you know, he doesn't mean, he didn't mean that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, you know? No, I did mean that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, I kind of get away. Well, of course, I get away with stuff because I'm hiding behind a character, and that yeah. that makes that makes it easier uh, to go out and perform every night. Sure, yeah, of course. But 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 if you look at some of the uh, the, the um, seventies traditional comedians, the first act I ever saw was on a family holiday in the seventies, and it was Les Dawson. And I love Les Dawson. I absolutely oh, love him. And I can see shades of him in the character that you do because oh, he's really? very oh, I... droll and very dry. And and he he gives the impression he doesn't want to be there, but but he's determined to make the audience laugh. And that's yeah, all you can yeah. do. He had a great command of language. Oh, he was wonderful. He he was so wonderful, Les Dawson. He had that's so cool. many irons in the fire that he could use he had the piano he had the characters yeah. he had the wordplay um and he was brilliant live he was so good live yeah sadly yeah. i never saw him live but it was funny so soul uh sorry i've called you soul again it's steve that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> uh please tell me how do you remember all your jokes and routines um I, I have no idea because i've got the worst, <laughs> the worst memory in the world um and as i'm getting older it's getting harder but having said that apparently um and i'm not cer certainly not making fun of people with alzheimer's no um but apparently if you're aware of forgetting things you haven't got alzheimer's i hope that i hope that's true yeah i, I read that somewhere um but I tell you what I do do. Uh, you, you'll notice if you go into a, 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 a green room, a lot of comics write their their act out what they're going to do that night on a piece of paper, a little pad or something. I actually write it on my left. I'm right-handed, so I write it on my left hand. But I hold the microphone with the left hand, so I can't even see it if I wanted to. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> but but I know it's there. So do you? You don't make it up as you go along, do you? Or no, no. I, I'm heavily scripted. Right. Um, I will. I will come out of the material if something happens in the room. Sure. Um, particularly if I can just take a moment and and come up with something funny, because because the thing is, I, I noticed a lot of comics they'll they'll kind of fire back really quickly, and you think if you'd have waited <laughs> a second, you'd have said something funny. Exactly. Instead, instead you actually answered. You 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 dealt with something yeah um, I, there was some years ago er, early days for soul when russell peters came over and it was just before he hit it really big he i got a phone call we had the same agent and the agent called me he said um saturday night uh, russell's doing two shows at the shaw theater in king's cross 
he's look it needs a support act he'd be, he'd be keen for you to do it can you do it and i went he said no you're not working and i'd been away i'd been in the west country all week and i, I was looking forward to a saturday off and i went well i said where is it he said Ca it's in king's cross and i thought god i live in camden <laughs> I get the tube, you know, I get the tube down. Next door. And, did the show <laughs> and, and and this will sound racist, and it's not meant to, because of the audience that he had, I was the only white person in the building. Right. And I got a heckled at one point by this guy, and I can't remember. I was obviously talking about soul sex life, and and I can't remember. But I I just the audience. He said something. To the guy. I can't even remember what he said, but I just paused. I just I just waited for a moment. And I just came to the edge of stage and I went, like, you'd know the fucking difference between a man and a woman. And it <laughs> was the Wasn't the funniest thing in the world to say, but because I'd taken my time, it, <laughs> I, I don't know if, I, if I'd have just come straight back, I wouldn't have said that. I don't know why no, I would no. have said no, But no. I, it just got a massive laugh and it made the joke on him. Suddenly, he's, he's the idiot now. Exactly. Not, yeah, not yeah. the old bloke talking about sex on stage. Um, <laughs> That, that is fantastic. Yeah, so that was kind of one little instance. But I'm I'm kind of I'm pretty focused um, when I'm on the stage. But I'm not unflappable. I, I, you know, some people you think, oh God, there's nothing you can. Al Murray, oh. you, you mentioned Al before. Yeah, yeah. Um, Al, Al, I think is unflappable. I don't think anybody could do anything oh. in the audience. I mean, to, he's, to he's one on. of the best with an audience. Just oh. he's away with them. It's just extraordinary to see. You you mentioned that um, Soul was created. Am I right? You said downstairs at the King's Head in yeah, in we, um, Crouch End. Yeah, we we I was part of a, an improv group right. run by Mark Mayer. Yeah, yeah. And we were trying to create some characters because you have this thing where you're putting it out to the audience, you know, and they say, right, you're an old Arab guy with one leg and you work in the shoe shop or something. <laughs> and funnily enough, the very first character that I created was um, was an Arab. Because wow. when I was in the packaging business, we dealt with a lot of menswear shops in the West End of London. And in German Street and Bond Street, a lot of Arabs and Kurds, oh, a lot of Syrians and Lebanese had clothing shops. And I kind yeah. of picked up the way they spoke. Yeah, and that, yeah. was, that was the original thing. And then, and then I think I saw Saturday Night Live. I saw Billy Crystal doing The Weatherman. Oh, the superb. Weatherman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and oh, oh, obviously I was influenced by Mel Brooks. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But the, but then that the character was just was just a man. Like one of the in the in the improv troupe, one of the things that we did was a, a kind of blind date. So we'd have someone like well, she's around now, Marilyn O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's great, and very funny. She'd be the Silla Black character. You'd have three guys sitting on the stage, and you'd pick a woman out from the audience. She'd have her back to the stage. We 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 did a private do. Um, the first time I did it in public, we, we did a we played a bar mitzvah in a hotel near Heathrow Airport, somewhere on the A4, one of those big hotels. So the woman, we came out, the woman had her back to us, and then she, she had to ask us questions. And I was the one I was the one she picked. She went, she <laughs> I was the, but I remember one question she said to me, Can you play tennis? I went, Tennis? I can barely walk. <laughs> And so <laughs> but I tell you what, I did. Um, I did a, um, a new material night, right? And I was really uncomfortable with it. It, it worked. Right. It worked right from the off. And I just felt. I, I remember saying to some friends, "You know what? I'm going to create a lot of anti-Semitism because I, I just, it was just something I just didn't feel comfortable with." Right. And then I didn't do anything with Soul for a couple of years. And there was an American comic over here called Stephen Allen Green. Right. And I've heard of him. Yeah, he, he's back He's back in America now, but he, yeah. he lived here for a, for a couple of years. Right. And I, I went out, I'd had lunch. I went out for lunch with him in, in Covent Garden to Joe Allen's, real, that showbiz haunt. <laughs> and what happened was... Be, the day before, a friend of mine phoned me up and he said, listen, I'm going to do Tuesday nights. It was, it was at the Hampstead Comedy Club. He said, I'm going to do Tuesday nights. I, I need to run in. I want to do a one-man show and I want to run in material. So he said, what I want to do, I want a nucleus of acts who can come. Every, I want to do six Tuesdays or something like that. 
and Harry Hill had signed up. He was going to do it. Dominic Holland was going to do it. And he said, I want you to come and do Soul. He said, I really think there's something there. And I said, well, you know, come in every two weeks, five minutes, new material. I've never been that prolific. Go and have lunch with Stephen Allen Green. And I, during the lunch, I went to the toilet. I came back and he had a, a DVD player or camera or something. And he said to me, I'll never forget this. And he said, so what's it like being back in show business after all these years? I went, well, it's a thrill and a privilege and a delight and blah, blah, blah. And I sat in the tube going home and I, I, and I said, to, I, I probably said it out loud. I, I know who Sol Bernstein is. Wow. And, and that was, and then I thought that he's an old vaudeville guy. He's made it, he's making a comeback. He, 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 you know, he's trying to come to terms with the modern world and, you know, talk about banging my chick and stuff, <laughs> you know, the kind of lunacy. That, that is, that is wonderful. And, and you can clearly see the influence with Mel Brooks and, Saturday Night Live and all and all this yeah. sort of thing. I, I I love all that sort of thing. I yeah. I um I saw Gene Wilder in a play uh, in the West End, the Neil Simon play, and and I absolutely love Gene Wilder. Yeah. And you can see oh, a, yeah. a, a lot of him in that. Um, it's it's such a wonderful character. And when you said about um him being formed downstairs, the King's Head and Harry Hill, um, I first saw. Harry Hill 30 years ago at Downstairs in the King's Head right. and he he brushed past me it's the greatest opening line ever apart from your one I think they're both <laughs> the same I think they're both the same he brushed past me he stood up on stage he said ladies and gentlemen I'm really sorry I'm late I had to have a testicle brought down and everybody burst out laughing and then he said from Derby <laughs> <laughs> he uh, is that, that uh, was you know what I, I, I hate the word genius I, I kind of think he's a he's just oh, he's extraordinary incredible talent yeah there's a, i've got a lovely harry story for you please um, do during uh before i'd created soul a lot of the comics were saying to me you know you, you you're in the, the music business you should write a one-man show about your experience in the music business and i start i started writing it and i, I was for a number of years uh, I ran the Meccano Club in, right. in Islington. Right, yeah, I know it, yeah. When I took it over, it was already established, but the lady who ran it was 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 ill and couldn't couldn't run it anymore. So I, I took it over. Um, and we were doing it there one night, and I was running that my, that stuff in. My dearest friend, Mike Gunn, was, yeah, was, was, was writing his show about being a, a drug addict. So I think Mike went on first, I went on second, and Harry was running in new material. So it was, it was billed as three people running in, you know, new stuff. By the time Harry went on, his opening line was, mm, mm, who's had the most interesting life, eh? Mm, eh? Who's had the most interesting life? Drug addict, music business? Mm, mm, who's had... <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Oh, uh, and there was another night where I was I was comparing my own club and just dying. Harry was on first. Ah, oh, brilliant! And I I got I injured, got him. He just nodded to me saying like, "Get me on," and I brought him on. And he said, mm, "Steve James," and he said, "What warming you up to the point of violence?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when I chatted to Al Murray, he he I told him that story, and he said, "Oh," he said, "Is is is this the one about when?" Um, uh, Harry Hill walked on with a mouse trap on his nose, and he said, "Ladies and gentlemen, I don't like cheese." <laughs> <laughs> He's so so good. Anyway, oh, no, what a great, great, comment. Let's, great comment. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's move on. Um, you won the Spirit of the Fringe Award at the Edinburgh Festival in 2005, and have never looked back. Um, <laughs> I have done. I have done. No, no, no. It's such a great act. Um, please describe the experience and what's your view of comedy competitions in general? Okay. Uh, first of all, I was I did I knew nothing about uh, Spirit of the Fringe. Um, I, I actually I think it was two thousand and three. It was my first oh, year. Yeah, no, I do apologise. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. The thing was, it was a real shock because I I I'd been on the show. They they'd come round and you know and seen everybody's shows and. Called, got in touch with me and said, "Could you come and do five minutes on the show on the Mervyn Stutter show?" Yeah. And um, then the, the the last thing I think I did 
did it. I certainly did it once, maybe did it twice. And then they invited me. They said, would you come and do the last one? And I went, yeah, I'd love to, because I knew what had happened was when I performed there, more people came to see my show because they, it was a nice little advert, you know, to promote well, my show, which is basically why they did it. Yeah. And when I got there and then somebody was given an award and I, I, and I just thought, oh, this, and I had no idea. And then they said, and so we present you with the spirit of the Fringe Award. And it was absolutely lovely. I mean, this oh, thing does, well nothing, does nothing for your career, but it was my first uh, first and only kind of honor. Let, let's yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was absolutely delighted. Um, so that was it. When it comes to competitions, uh, well, we I had a we had a funny experience a couple of years ago. Sadly, you probably know that Lynn Ruth Miller sadly passed away. That was really tragic. Yeah, very recently. Well, yeah. we both did um, an old, uh, the oldest comedian. Yeah, yeah, the old comedian of the year, uh, the Leicester Square Theatre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we both, got, I, I say obviously, not obviously, but we both got into the final, and we were on the final. Arthur Smith was hosting the show yeah. and with and with great respect to everybody else that was on the show we were that we were the oldest people we were the oldest on the show you know even if i was i'm not 88 i'm not sold i'm still in my 70s and yeah, she yeah. was too we didn't we didn't come in the th in the the the, th the the top three. Oh, mate and, and we re and i tell you what my closing line because i looked at my watch or they gave me a light and i realized my time was up and i went well I'm going to go and bang Lynn, Lynn Ruth Miller in the dressing room. <laughs> I'm going to go and fist her or something. And got a massive round of applause, came off stage, and bless her, she came. We had to come off the stage and instead of going back into the green room, we had to sit in the stalls. Oh, no. <laughs> and as I, which was fun, as I came off the stage, she came towards me. She gave me a hug. She said to me, You just won the competition. And Absolutely. I didn't. Like we, we, and I remember when it, they did three, two, and I thought, as long as it's her, I'd be happy with that. But it wasn't. It was a young guy. And I thought, what the fuck is going on? And it really, yeah, yeah, yeah. So consequently, um, when I, well, I mean, I'll never do a competition again. I, I just yeah. kind of, it sounds like sour grapes. I know it does. And, and I don't, I, I kind of don't mean it too, but I do mean it I too. Know, I know what you um, mean. Yeah. It, it would be like if Barry Cryer had gone in for it. And not been placed you think hang on a yeah. second yeah yeah a guy, yeah. Of, a guy of 35 won it and, you know that's they're not old comedians yeah 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 very very true um your character is exceptionally confident on stage do you suffer from any nerves before you go on stage at all and how do you cope with them oh <laughs> nervous, <laughs> nervous as hell wow um, you one of my I one of the things that, that I, I need to do, I pace up and down. Right. I pace up and down, kind of tap the you, you groan. Uh, uh, I, I grunt a bit. Um go out and do it. Um yeah. but yeah, I enough, you know, I mean now before I before we connected um today. I'd gone, I'd gone out for a walk this morning and, and I thought, well, I've got the night off tonight. And I thought, God, why do I do this? I, why do I put myself through it? Wouldn't it be nice to retire? But having said that, about three months ago, what, kind of during the lockdown, obviously no gigs were being booked and I'm, a, I'm a, an older age anyway. And I said to my wife, I said, you know, I may have already retired and I don't even know it because when I was saying you don't leave show business, it leaves Lead you. But ha having it, it, it's just in and she said to me now i went what i was was and you know to do it anymore yeah yeah you know i, I for example I, I on on facebook this week i had a private gig to do Saturday, october this, i know this this will be weird because now time it would be my name 2022 or something <laughs> but, but i had a, a, a private gig which they've moved to December now, because apparently the venue they were doing it in, they're re reflooring the place. So I've still got the gig, they've paid a deposit, so everything's still on. But I put on Facebook that I'm now available on on this on that Saturday, like in two weeks' time. Yeah, yeah. And within half an hour, never ever booked me. 
uh, came up with, with uh, and I just went, I don't want to be rude, I said, but I do something a little bit closer to home, traveling, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Um, and then just before I started, I, I got a message, a bear cat in Twickenham, and they said, are you, are you still free on, on the week? And I said, yeah, and they went, you, you're with us. Which is great because it will take me forty minutes to get there, and I, I, I just, I'm doing quite a, because of the lockdowns and everything. I'm doing a bit more traveling. Sure. I tried to cut the traveling down a little bit. Yeah. Kind of when needs must, you know, you need to work, so you work maybe for a little less money than you would have worked for two, eighteen months ago. Um, sure. and clubs yeah, are certainly yeah. taking advantage. Well, not taking advantage, but if they've got less people coming in. They're taking less at the door, so they're paying a bit less. So, of course, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've got to live with that. So, yeah. the bear cat, um, absolutely. When I sat down with you, I thought, God, how confident I'm, I'm feeling because my next gig at the, the bear cat is booked is already for January. There you go. So, there you go. Got yeah, next yeah. Year in. yeah, 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 of course. But yes, I do get nervous. Um, yeah, I, I kind of think if you don't get nervous, you don't care anymore. I, I, I think, think so. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I totally agree. Um, let's move on to Edinburgh. I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to go to the, to be able to go to the Edinburgh Fringe every year. I obviously haven't been this year. I didn't go last year because of the pandemic, but I've been going every year since 2005. Right. And I go in the middle week normally, and I see about 50 shows, and wow. I'm exhausted by the end of it. I That's just really it. Well. But I, I, that's that's my holiday. Um, yeah. Can you tell me what your first Edinburgh Fringe was like? Um, what year did you go up? Um, what what was your experience of it? Right, I think it was two thousand and three. Right, and that was that was the year I got the Spirit of the Fringe Award. Sure. I I did it at the Gilded Balloon. Um, was it? It wasn't the billiard room. I think it was the room next door, and I can't remember. Excuse me, what it was called, but. There's loads, isn't that? With one Abs of the wee absolutely loved it. Well, I, I must tell you, I'm, I'm, I come from a family of market traders, so they were workers, they were grafters, and for me, working 27, 28 nights on the trot, particularly without having to drive and travel and park and whatever, just to walk from where I'm staying to the venue. But actually, fun, funnily enough. The first year I did it, I shared um, I shared accommodation with Mike Gunn, Rainer Hirsch, Paul Provenza was over from America. Yeah. Me. And there was someone else. Maybe it was, maybe it was Steve Best. Oh, he's brilliant. And I think we had, it was a really big flat. And I know that Ian Stone stayed a couple of nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think somebody else stayed a couple of nights, but there was a load of us. And one of the things that I, re I remember, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed it. Mike Gunn hated it. <laughs> he hated every day up there. And I, I, lo I loved working. I loved the experience. And it was also really nice. I, I, I've got a thing. I, I could probably sound very snotty. I think if somebody got, if any comics go up there with a modicum of talent and a modicum of funny, they come back better. Yeah. If they go up shit, they come back shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I did. Um, and, and I've noticed a lot, and, and I certainly, it was certainly kind of the, the breakthrough for me. I came back just feeling a lot, lot stronger. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think, I think that's the magic of it. Watching as, watching it from an audience point of view, it's an extraordinary showcase for anybody who wants to go up. And it, and, I think it's there for the exposure of the comedian. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, now now things have changed. I mean, if you ask me the question, would I go again? I'd probably say no. Right. As much as I did enjoy it, I lost I lost quite a bit of money last time I went up there, actually, um, which was, I don't know, about five, six years ago or something. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of, I'll tell you what, I've kind of realised my place in, in, in the pecking. I'm a, I'm a nightclub comic. Yeah. And I really, and, I, and that, that's, for me, that's not derog. I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So, that's where I am. I'm not, say, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not a performance artist. Yeah. For me, if you say to me, Steve, I want to book you, um, 20, 25 minutes, great. I'm not looking for 45 minute extended sets particularly. No. I want to go out there and slam them, go out and do what Soul does. Well, I, I think, I think he does best is go out and just smashes them over the head for 20, 25 minutes 
and then comes off and goes exactly. home. Exactly, exactly, my friend. Whereas, um, whereas, you know, there's a lot of performers, you know, Al Murray, if, if you'd want, you desperately want more after 20 minutes with Al. Yeah, yeah. Al's an hour, an hour performer. Yeah, yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah, 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 very, yeah, very, very true. Um, I've seen you many times on stage over the years from We Love Comedy in 2014, that little tiny um, comedy showcase, to Headline of Comedy. We, we, we Love Comedy was in Liverpool Street, just a little tiny club. Sean Brightman's gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Now, okay. That's when I first saw you. I got to know okay. Sean really well. He compared it. Um, and I've seen you many times at Headliners. I, I live in Southfields and my, ah. friend, and my friend lives in Hanwell and we meet in Chiswick every once in a while and right. go to the George IV. And it's a wonderful club to play, certainly for you, because oh. that room is extraordinary. Um, and you have made, you, as I said at the start, you've made me laugh so, so much that whenever your name's on a bill, I always look forward to... Oh, bless you. Well, next time I'm on the bill and you come, for God's sake, say hello. I will do, mate, definitely. Um, Let me buy you a drink. Thank you so much. Um, uh, please, can you describe your writing process, if you've got one, and <laughs> where, where do you get your ideas from for the shows? Can you tell me a bit more about this? Or, or... Yeah, I, I tell you what, I'm very, I'm very lazy. <laughs> this is a general that. answer from the comedians of it. <laughs> okay, I, I, it's, a, it's a conversation I shy away from. Especially <laughs> right, okay. people say, "Oh, you know, come to the new material night." And I went, mm, "I haven't got any new material." <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, I'm a, because I'm a massive fan of Woody Allen. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a great believer. I, I've read so much of his stuff, uh, and there was a wonderful um, interview he did. Uh, it's in a book called Comedy Greats. They did an audio version as well. And I, I can't think for the life of me the name of p p the guy who wrote it. But the guy had been a comedian. Um, I, I'm sure I had that book, but I can't remember the name myself. It's a big white book with Robin Williams on the front and Woody Allen was in there. Uh, I can't remember. No, I'm not sure. Was it I Gene? Some... Anyway, the name of the, I can't what remember. Woody Allen said was when you're trying out a new bit of material, don't do it when the club's half empty. Do it on a, in a packed room. It needs some balls to do it. But do it in a room that's packed when you've won the audience over and you know that if you throw a line in and, and they don't laugh, you know you can get back into another bit of material which you know works. Yeah, exactly. So consequently, I've kind of taken that on board. So, And I don't write chunks of five, six, seven no, minutes no. of material so if I'm going to go down to the King's Head on a Thursday night, which I know I could go down any night, Peter and I have been friends for 25, 26, 27 years. Yeah. Um, I, I, could, I could just phone him up and say, can I come down tonight? I'd be, trying, I'd be doing some old material and then maybe drop three new lines in or something like that. So consequently, I'm better off just putting those lines in during my set. Sure. So it's, there's that. And then, and also I'm, I kind of don't, I, I really won't try anything unless I'm pretty certain it's going to work. I, I'm not one of those, well, let's take a chance. It might work, it might not. I've got to convince myself that it'll work. Like there was a, an old, I won't go, I don't want to do it, but it was a bit of material that I used to do as me. Yeah. And I thought, I wonder if that would work as soul. And it does, it works better for a soul than it did for me. And it worked, and it worked for me. So it's the weirdest, it's the weirdest thing, but I, I knew I was confident because I knew. I knew the phrasing, I knew the timing, yeah, yeah, yeah. The delivery of that piece. All I had to do it was in, you know, in Soul's voice, with that, that accent it. rather than uh, in my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, I'm terrible. I um, no. but right, well, you know, when you you're thinking someone's going out, like, God, I worked with Michael McIntyre in the early days. He would right. go out and he'd do twenty new minutes. I mean, yeah, my yeah. God. I saw him in a hut in Edinburgh before he was famous, played to about 50 people. And you could just tell he was going to be a superstar because the delivery of the jokes and, and yeah. it was just extraordinary. Yeah. So, Steve, uh, do you have any ambitions as a comedian? Um, not really, because I'm not that ambitious. Having said that, um, it would be nice to keep doing this till I'm 100. 
<laughs> and so, well, George Burns did, and Ken Dodd nearly did. <laughs> well, George Burns actually no, he, he didn't make it to a hundred. I didn't make it to a hundred. <laughs> no, he nearly. He was ninety nine, I think. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Yeah. And M Milton Berle as well. Also yeah, yeah, to such like, a yeah. To his late nineties. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I tell you what, the one thing I would love, and if somebody was listening, the one thing that I'd really, really love to do would be uh, to get onto something like The Simpsons and do a, and do a voice. How fantastic would that be? And especially now Jackie Mason's passed away. Yeah, yeah, that was such. So a, my, <laughs> that was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would that would be fun. Something I've never done, and something I've kind of wanted to do. Um, I can see you on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see me, but you'd see. Someone no, I could hear you on it. <laughs> I know. I know. That would be amazing. That would be incredible. Um, how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs? Have you done many of them during lockdown? No, I tell you what, I've done one. Right. And it was a gig that we that was booked um, to play a, a synagogue gig uh, that Benny Aaron, the right. comedian, had booked. Uh, and it was cancelled because of the lockdown. In fact, it was it was the first weekend last last year, the very first lockdown. I did my last gig uh, March the thirteenth um 2020 and this gig was on the sunday night and boris made the announcement on the monday to you know for the lockdown but they you know these people knew that they wouldn't get an audience so yeah, it yeah. was cancelled so bennett said they want to do it in november or december of of of, of the year of, of 2020 sure and he said the only thing is he said they they really need you to clean it up clean the act up a bit. Well, <laughs> it's the best bit the the, the, the spot. <laughs> that's right, that's, that's so. anyway we reached a compromise and i said how long do they how long have i got to do he said 15 minutes i said okay i'll tell you what i'll do i'll edit like mad and i'll do 10 clean minutes from my act and i don't know if you know and I'm, i was going to plug it at the end of this anyway yeah. but during the lockdown on facebook and twitter I put an old joke on every day. I yes, I would always like it. I did it right, and during that period, I was contacted by a company called Red Bush Music. Um, they asked me to put an album together. Wow! So I've got an album out called Sol Bernstein, an old Jew telling old Jewish jokes. How fantastic! And I said, what I'll do, I'll do ten minutes of my act, and maybe five minutes of the cleanest of the Jewish jokes from the album. That's brilliant. Which gave me a chance to plug the album. Yeah. And also tell, tell the jokes. So consequently, that's what I did. And then somebody else called me and said, you did this podcast, this thing with, um, Zoom thing with, with Bennett. And I went, but I didn't do my act. I, I did a, a clean thing. And I, and I don't really want to do that. No, 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 no. No, you, no, you, you need the whole act, really, for it, for it, yeah. for it, for it, for it. You need, a live, you need a live audience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't like doing kind of men's men's night. Have you actually asked a, a question earlier on? We didn't finish it about what Sorry. about worst gigs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'd done a a, a, a men's night um, in a golf club in Shirley near Birmingham. Right. And I did the men's night there, and it was it was great. It was lovely, and it was. But you know, when I came out, I thought, you know, I just I don't want to do men's nights. I, I prefer I need women in the audience. Yeah. because of, of my abusive nature <laughs> about two years went by and the guy phoned me he said don't you remember you did this show for me and i said yeah um and he said i'd like you to come back to, to celebrate our a, it's a birthday i can't remember if it was 30 years or something like that and i said look i said is it a men's thing he said no no it'll be couples and i said look i noticed most of the men were older so i'm guessing their wives are going to be older too he went no 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 They'll love you. You you you'll, you'll kill. <laughs> we agree the fee and we 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 book the thing. On the day of the show, I, I was I just happened to go on uh, online banking for something. I, he was going to pay me on the night, but I, I I looked to check about something else. But he'd actually paid me. Oh, he paid me the day before, <laughs> and I thought, well, it was very nice. He didn't need to do it anyway. I get to the gig, and one of the things like when young comics say to me. Who, who actually believe that I am Sol Bernstein, and I'm 58 <laughs> years old. 
<laughs> I've been doing this job for 70 years. I say, any advice you'd give? And I went, you know what? I couldn't give you, I, I couldn't give you any advice other than never prejudge a room. Yeah. Now I'm having a hell of a lot of fun now with you. I didn't know you were in the audience. You've ever been in the audience in my show. So I'm benefiting now. But from that's that. lovely because that's if you really wouldn't nice see, you, you, you may not have me on this thing you know you know when i send you the invoice you better pay quickly because I, <laughs> I, I, I send the boys around anyway cut long story short i look <laughs> at this room and i said to him you know what i'm I, I, i'm not sure and he's what do you mean i went i'm the last person to prejudge a room but i'm and he said me don't he said look there are two tables of jewish people over there they're going to love it. Everything will be fine. Okay. I said, look, if you want, I'll give you a last chance. I'll take 30 quid for petrol and I'll, I'll, I'll go home and I'll, I'll, I'll send you the money back tonight. I said, no hard feelings. He said, no, no, that'd be silly. Now, I didn't go on with an attitude, but I went on and it was tough. But I, I was supposed to do 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah. And I'd heard the word disgusting used from one of the, I've got really great hearing. My wife's partially deaf, but I've got really good hearing. And there was one particular point where from that corner where the two tables of Jewish people were. So there must have been 10 on the table. There must have been 20 people. Yeah. And the rest of the audience, maybe 300 people weren't Jewish. And I heard the word disgusting. And I thought, okay, blank it. I didn't do and I glanced very ca casually at my watch while I was, I, I took a sip of my drink while, while I was getting a laugh. I thought, oh my God, I've just done, I've done over 20 minutes. Yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do the jerking off routine. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to do it and I was getting really good laughs, even from people on, on one of the Jewish tables were cracking up. They really <laughs> were. And then at the corner of my eye, I saw some movement. And there were round tables and there was a guy from that part of the, the room weaving his way around the tables. And I thought, he can't be going to the toilet. <laughs> I thought, no, he's, he's coming to me. <laughs> and he did. And he came straight over. To, he walked and the audience were kind of, and the, I kind of was watching them, watching him. And I was carrying on talking. Then I stopped and he came over and he put his arm on my shoulder. He said, we'd, we'd like you to leave wow and i had the mic in my hand i went who's we and everybody <laughs> laughed i said take your goddamn hand off me you son of a bitch right <laughs> and he kept it on and and there, there was just and then i saw john it was the, yeah. the, the general manager of the golf club come running across and he came and i dropped i put the mic down so the, the audience couldn't hear me i said listen uh, he wants me to leave I said, this is madness. I said, you know, I said, if you're not unhappy, if you're unhappy with the whole thing, you you leave. <laughs> and I was being really exactly. nice. So I wasn't swearing. I wasn't. No, no, no. And then I, I kind of looked up and I said to John, hang on a second. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, I said, for some reason, I said, this gentleman is turned out to be, and I said, it was in Soul's voice. This guy, this guy is your moral guardian. And he's unhappy with my performance. I said, I'd like to carry on, but I, I'll be honest with you, I think. He's poisoned the night, which I believed. I believed he had. But do I couldn't go. I couldn't just carry on now. <laughs> no, exactly. Is he, is he going to stand there? He's going to walk away. I mean, is he going to try and punch me? He was an old guy, so I don't know. It would have been really funny, you know, to try and have a mock fight with him, you know, to go. <laughs> you know, I don't know what I would have done. And I said, you know, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say, he's poisoned. I said, you know, whatever I've done, you've been laughing, so I'm guessing you've enjoyed it, but. It's got to the point where I can't continue. So all I can say is, muzzle off, happy birthday. And I've lifted my drink, I had a glass of water, I always take water on. Here's to another 30 years, whatever. Thank you, good night. I gave him the microphone. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic. It, that's now it, gets, it gets funnier because <laughs> the green room, the green room was a back bar. Yeah. And just as I was walking around, just before I got into that back room, I heard a woman say, how come a, why, how come a Jewish man would talk like that? And it must have been his wife and, 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 and somebody else from his party. And I just looked in, I went, I tipped my hat, I went, ladies, I tipped my hat. And it was great because it was getting dark out, the lights were on, and I could see their reflection in the, the windows. <laughs> and they ran for their 
fucking lives. They just shit themselves when they because like, I caught them. You know what I mean? Though? How can John... <laughs> Next thing is John and a big guy comes in. Like I look like a bouncer. <laughs> And I just, I was, I just for a second just stood back and he said, it's my brother. He said, don't worry. He said, Steve, he said, I'm really sorry. He said, I, I said, John, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, you should have kicked him out. Yeah. You know, the, and then we were, and we were chatting about it. And suddenly this very, a, a lady came in, very ladylike, very English, like, you know, twin sets, pearl necklace, or whatever. And she came in. And she said, Mr. And I thought, if she's going to give me any grief. <laughs> and she came over, she said, Mr. Bernstein, I am so sorry. And she said, John, we should, the man wasn't even a member. He was a guest. You should have kicked him out. <laughs> she said, Mr. Bernstein, she, and, and she looked like, she thinks I'm real, obviously. She said, would, you like, would you like to go back on? And I said, I'd love to, but I don't, I don't think I can. I said, I, just, I think that the night's been poisoned. <laughs> You know what's going to happen if I go back? They, they, suddenly they're going to—he's going to be walking out and making a noise going across. You know it'll disrupt the show. That is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. So I, you know, came out of there, um, and the, there's a follow-up story. Now I don't know if you heard of—you know a, 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 an Orthodox Jewish comedian called Ashley Blaker. Yes, I've heard of him. Right. Ashley was organising a tour. He was doing it himself. Yeah. And he was talking to a synagogue in the Birmingham area. Yeah. He tied up the fee, he tied up the date, and he was just about to, to finish the meeting. And the rabbi or the guy from the synagogue said, she said just before you go out, he said, uh, Did you ever play a golf club in <laughs> Shirley and so and so? <laughs> and he actually knew the story. He went, No, he said that that was some, my friend Sol Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's he, what a great story. Up, he he said, because the guy was going to say, if it, like, if it was you, you're cancelled. I don't want, you know, I heard he was disgusting. And he went, he's not disgusting. He's a funny, he, actually he said he's a funny it's man. A great act. But if it's not your taste, it's not your taste. Exactly. It, exactly. It, you know. What, uh, a, what a great story, though. That's that's wonderful. Um, with the online gigs, uh, I went to a lot of them. Did um, you? Uh, and it was just like this, but but at the start of them, um, there was there was no audio. The 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 you couldn't hear the laughter or you couldn't hear the audience at all. And um, when because I've got a loud laugh, because I was laughing loudly, I thought I was going to get taken away because I was just laughing at four walls. Yeah. But then but then they opened them up, and the comedians who were the guests could. Um, chat to the front row, the virtual front row, etc., etc., etc. And um, I used to go uh, to Happy Mondays uh, gig on a Monday night, um, and I'd go to Always Be Comedy. I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of Always Be Comedy in Kennington. I always sit on the front row there. Uh, and on the Fridays, I used to go to the Irishman uh, abroad um return of the crack with charlotte regan who's a very good friend of mine ah, um, right. re really really good lad um but um as soon as the co the comedy club started opening up again you cannot be live there is something oh yeah special yeah. about being in the moment because you never Absolutely. know what's going to happen and yeah. it's just wonderful to we are now slowly getting back to live gigs and it's just a wonderful oh, thing to go it really is um who are your favorite comedians past and present god i tell you what it, it changes it yeah. changes so often because things crop up for example i always i, I genuinely forget billy crystal but he was so on good. the one show he's got a movie just about to come out yeah yeah, yeah. This, this comes out uh, the film will be old but he was he was over he was promoting it he was from america they did it on on uh yeah. zoom thing billy crystal um uh i have to say jackie mason yeah uh, lenny bruce uh chris rock i just think it's absolutely wonderful yeah. uh richard pryor yeah 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 it's great um and there's some mel brooks yeah there's so there's so many um i'm, I'm guessing kind of mostly jewish jewish or black 
Black yeah. Americans. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I would say for me, um, I mean, I've, I've seen over a thousand, but, uh, but, but the American comedians. I love Steve Martin. I think oh, he's. I think he's. Another, fantastic. Have you, I saw have him seen, live. Have you seen the show with with um, um, Martin Short? Martin Short. I've seen it on video, and I had a Once ticket to go to the Royal Albert Hall, but they cancelled it. That's which right. It was a shame. But but I did see him do the gig with the Steep Canyon Rangers, the bluegrass, and uh, the, the the music. And right at the end, he came on with the arrow in the head and the the right. Egyptian routine. It's <laughs> just wonderful. Um, I love him. I've seen Bill Hicks. I was very fortunate to see Bill Hicks at Manchester. Amazing. He was amazing. Um, I'm a massive Cheers fan. I've met Norm, uh, who I love. Uh, um, uh, but um, are you a uh, Rich Hall fan? Oh, massive, massive. He, he's he's a regular at headliners. He's such well, a great act. I'll tell you what. I'm absolutely. I, the, one of the, okay. You want to talk about one of the highlights of my career? Um, headliners did this. You, you know they were doing some showcase shows. Yeah. I did one last year, and then we did one this year. Right. And on this year one, there was there was six acts doing ten minutes each. And Rich was closing. Wow. And everybody had left. All the other five, the five acts had gone home. And I stayed. And I was just sitting with Rich's wife watching him. Wow. I, I adore him. And he, he's, he's so wonderful. good. And his work ethic is, you know, yeah. when I say I'm lazy about writing, he writes all the time. It's amazing. It a lovely moment. He was tuning yeah. his guitar up. And he said, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, that's Saul Bernstein. He said, uh, 88, that bullshit, not eight. Guy's 26, wears a lot of fucking makeup, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, to be mentioned, I, I, that was just and Fantastic. a really big round of applause. And his wife, um, Karen, said to me, he loves you, you know? And I went, I, I know. I said, that was such a compliment to mention me. Oh, brilliant. Who does that? Was, yeah, exactly. That. Exactly. I I uh, I I love the fact I love his character, um Otis Lee Crenshaw. I love his stand up, but I, yeah. I particularly um with the band as well. He, the the way he can just pick uh, a member of the audience and then create a song. It's oh. an extraordinary talent. It I really know. is. I know it is. He's, I've, I've been a massive fan of his for years. Um, Me too, for the first time he came over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Following on from that, um, like me, do you go to a lot of stand-up comedy shows as a member of the audience? Never. But having said that, I'm going to, I'm going to see Rich Hall in about two weeks' time in, in my local theatre. Brilliant. Well, that's great. Um, uh, just as an aside to that, if you're, if you're performing on a bill, do you um, stay and watch all the comedians on the bill? It it depends. If I'm in yeah. London, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, or obviously, it depends where I am on the bill. If, for example, yeah. I was in Southampton last night closing. Sure. But I got there. I got there at the beginning, so I could see all the show. Brilliant. Um, and again, it depends. If I'm out, if it's out of London, um, if it's like a two three hour journey, yeah. I probably won't stay. No. Although the only time I ever did was to watch Alan Carr, uh, and I'm going fantastic. back. I'm going back a long time <laughs> from when from his early days when he was doing stand. But no, he hadn't done any television. But I was doing a gig just outside Manchester, and my agent was um, it, lived in Manchester. And he said, "Right, you're on the I booked you on this show, and you're on with a guy called Alan Carr." He said, "You're on before him." He said, "But." I know you're going to drive home after the show, he said, but I'd really like you to stick around and watch him. And I did. And then I drove like three and a half hours home. But um, Fantastic. A great comedian. He live. Absolutely, He's absolutely so good. Wonderful. Yeah. He, he is one of the few that um, uses uh, Carlisle, the theatre in Carlisle, as a testing ground for his new tours. And I've seen him once or twice in Carlisle. And whenever he walks on, he's so good because he, he does know, obviously know the area. But the first line is normally, oh, I have no idea where I am, but it's lovely to be here, you know. And then he'll, he'll, he'll have a great line about 
that particular audience and that's yeah, a good yeah. skill um the reason i asked the questions those two questions is um that in my blog i've got a section called the ones that got away and i've written 20 i've written about 25 of them and top of the tree for me was markham and wise um i would have loved to have seen them live uh, because um, they were just extraordinary. There was this other level with those great comedians where just twiddle yeah. your glasses or the fairs with Tommy Cooper. I did, we did see Tommy Cooper live. And yeah, he was I, extraordinary. Saw, I saw Tommy Cooper twice. Yeah, yeah, he was amazing. When when we saw the, the curtains open, there was nothing on stage but a bed and he's lying on it. And the one oh, woman in the crowd starts laughing and it trickles round to everybody's laughing. And he pops up after about five minutes and he goes, what, what, has somebody come on? <laughs> I, he was genius. <laughs> when I saw him, he did that thing from backstage. <laughs> he, he, he said, oh it's, oh, it's dark in here. <laughs> and he's fumbling around. They've introduced him and he's obviously, he knows, obviously he knows where he is, but yeah. he's making out, he's finding just, his way. He was just face. superb. He's one of the greatest. Um, uh, I've so much enjoyed talking to you. You've been a fantastic guest. You really oh, bless have. You. You've been a you've been a fantastic host. Thank you so much. Um, just before we go, um, do you want? Is there anything else you'd like to say? Where can people find you on social media? Where yeah. can people see where you're gigging? Um, uh, have you got any books coming out or anything like this, or podcasts no. or anything? No, I tell you what, you can you can find me. Um, well, I, by the time this goes out, I hope I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> you will be, my friend. All, I things, be, all <laughs> things being equal, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. Um, when things really settle down, uh, my website will be um, actually Sean Brightman. Yeah, built my website. Wow. Wow. You before, I didn't know uh, that. You know, his, his venue. We love yeah. comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but I always keep it up to date. But because now things get cancelled, you know, you're worried about lockdowns and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I just put stuff down basically on a daily basis on Twitter and Facebook about where I'm working. Um, and is it is it Sol Bernstein? That's that's the tag, is it? Yep. Okay. Sol Bernstein. And obviously the, the, the website is www.solbernstein.com or and and .co .uk. Um, and the other thing is I, 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 there might be another album out by the time it comes out but um the album an old jew telling old jewish jokes which you can get on um amazon and you can buy on itunes i'm um, gonna get it i'm gonna get it <laughs> I, i'd send you a copy but it's it's not that it's only an online thing there's no it's there's fine no mate no worries <laughs> what, I, what i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do i'll get it i'll I'll buy it, and when we next meet, you can sign it. Well, you, there'll be nothing to sign. Oh, it's only it's online. Not... Oh, yeah. mate, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I will. I will get it downloaded onto my phone then, definitely. Well, and if you enjoy Souls Act, I mean, there's 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 some swearing on it, but but there's some just wonderful jokes. I really researched. Brilliant. And you've got about like forty odd minutes, just forty to forty five minutes of joke, 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 joke. Brilliant. That's and a laugh track. <laughs> that's wonderful well um i'm hoping to see you again live very very soon and, and i please. can't wait because as i say whenever your name's on a bill uh i always smile and i know i'm gonna have a great time so i wish oh, you every you. success you. with the act keep doing it you're doing a joyous thing and it's been a pleasure to talk to you my friend absolutely you too bless you keep well and, and please i'll I owe you a drink. Thank <laughs> you so much. I Thank owe you two drinks. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh. I'll, I'll definitely take you up on that. And all the best. Thank you okay. so much. You too. Take care.